When I showed up in Ukraine with a list of, I think, 20 names, the Ukrainians countered me and gave me over 10,000 names of orphans that they, they didn't know where they were because of the chaos caused by war. What's going on, family? Welcome back to the channel. If this is your first time watching, welcome. Today's a little different, all right? If you haven't seen the movie Sound of Freedom, I highly suggest you guys check it out. Very good movie. But if you don't know, there's a lot of controversy around this movie with Mel Gibson, right? Somewhat and literally exposing Hollywood for what it really is. Let's go ahead and check out the video, man. Let's go. In a 1998 interview, Mel Gibson made a number of cryptic references to a dark and evil side of Hollywood that he personally encountered. When I came over here, I was, oh God, I was in my, my uh, mid-twenties. Right. The first time I really came over here. You know, I had a whole bunch of weird paranoid suspicions about what the hell was going on because there was a lot of stuff I couldn't understand. Right. Um, and nobody was really bothering to explain it to me. They don't. <clears throat> and, it, it, and I formed a bunch of opinions about the town and about the people in it that were like, surely that couldn't be because a whole place can't be like, you know, weird town, you know, where the stranger wanders in and, and all the people are in the bar and they all shut up when he looks at him and, mm -hmm. and they tell you don't go out of the house on the hill. and It's like that. Mm -hmm. And then you go away and you think, no, that's, I was wrong. I mean, that's insane thinking. I'm paranoid. I imagined that stuff. That couldn't be the reason for why so-and-so was acting like could it? Mm. And then you find out later on the track that you are exactly on track mm. with a lot of this stuff. Not specifically on no. track, but that you could, uh, that some of your worst nightmares were real at the time. And you think, mm. a place like this can humiliate you. Mm -hmm. And it can be, it can either, it can humiliate you, it can be humbling. I mean, it, it does rip your life to pieces Is it? if you'll let it. Yeah. Hmm. And it's always pounding at the walls. It's yeah. the, these little guys, these little heathens with no soul downstairs with horns on their head with a battering ram trying to like beat your walls in. And I remember they used to call Mel Gibson crazy, right? Because he was just different. The way he thinks is different. The way he moves is different. Um, but that's a very dismissive word, man. I think they were trying to use that word to make other people not listen to him. But we're listening to him now. Let's get back into it. Now, Gibson, of course, since that interview, has met with, uh, shall we say, some unfortunate circumstances. His reputation was soiled after 2006 drunk driving arrest when he made widely publicized anti-Semitic remarks, which have tarnished his reputation among Hollywood insiders ever since. And yet, Gibson appears to have come out from that reputational slander rather undaunted. He was seen of late standing up and saluting President Trump at a recent UFC championship fight, and he's been pictured posing with Kerry Lake in Arizona. But now we're getting reports that Gibson is preparing to release a groundbreaking four-part documentary series that will shed light on the hidden world of a global child sex trafficking ring. That's crazy. According to Newsweek, the shocking revelation is expected to expose the industry's staggering annual revenue of $34 billion. If you can believe it, that's an amount that surpasses the yearly earnings of the airline industry. Mm. Here's Tim Ballard of Operation Underground and one of the leading figures in the global fight against child trafficking. Ukraine got a phone call from Mel Gibson. He actually did the final edit of The Sound of Freedom. That's how we know each other, but not well, not well enough that I'd be getting phone calls. He told me that he was in Budapest at the time. This was right hours after the invasion. And he said he supports a bunch of orphans in Ukraine and he was worried about them. And he asked if I could help get them out. So now I've got 12 from my wife. I got 13 others from Mel Gibson. And I'm thinking, okay, I got this list of kids I got to get out. Um, I told Mel, I said, you got to help me. This is going to be expensive. I won't ask you for direct donation, but can you help me film this? You know, let's film what's happening so we can get people to understand and they can support us. He said, no problem. He helped us get set up and started filming. Four months later, what I thought was going to be maybe a documentary about Ukraine ends up being a four-part docu-series that's almost 
done. It's being produced by DNA Films and executive produced by Tony Robbins. That's how crazy it got and how prophetic my wife was. When I showed up in Ukraine with a list of, I think, 20 names, the Ukrainians countered me and gave me over 10,000 names of orphans that they didn't know where they were because of the chaos caused by war. And more importantly and, and more frightening to me was the fact that I know that human trafficking is a $32 billion a year business. It's the fastest growing criminal enterprise in the world. And I also know how kids get forced into that market. And it's weird because it's not talked about enough or even mainstream enough. And you got to ask yourself why, you know, this should be one of the forefront conversations we should be having um, globally. Right. But it's not. It's always some some uh, secret almost as if, you know, folks don't want us to know what's really going on behind the scenes, man. Let's get back into it. And it's through vulnerable situations like in the aftermath of a hurricane, mostly in a developed country or an earthquake, or in this case, a war. Hey gang, have you seen the Twitter thread died suddenly or the new movie by the same name? It really is heartbreaking to see the rise of sudden stroke deaths that seem to occur in lockstep with the tyrannical forced vaccinations of the Biden administration. And now the number of strokes continue to rise. And I'm very concerned. So here's something that I'm doing to protect myself and my family. My friends at Lifeline Screening are helping me detect my risk of having a stroke. And I encourage you to do the same by clicking on the link below. If we're going to defeat liberalism, it's vitally important that we stay healthy for this battle. Your family and your country need you to be at your best. So let me tell you, getting screened today to confirm you're healthy will bring you peace of mind and screening that results in early detection just might save your life. So don't wait. Protect your legacy today and ensure you're healthy by visiting Lifeline Screening right mm. now. Securing your health is just a click away. Again, that was Tim Ballard. Uh, he's absolutely amazing. He's a former CIA and DHS special agent, and now he's dedicated his life to rescuing children from human trafficking, which, of course, is happening in Ukraine, as he uh, pointed out. And it's happening more than any one of us could imagine our worst nightmares at our southern border, thanks to the deliberate incompetence of the bumbling Biden administration. But as you can see from that testimony, Mel Gibson, behind the scenes, is on the forefront of these rescue operations, which may indeed involve the release of this documentary, that according to Newsweek. Now, you should know Gibson's publicist has uh, denied these rumors. Uh, obviously, he's very worried about the blowback that Mel right. would inevitably get from a town that doesn't appear to take too kindly to exposing some of their darker tendencies. But unfortunately for Hollywood, the genie may be out of the bottle on this one. Right. Uh, I don't know if any of you saw the recent bomb. I would even add to that, like, it's probably for his own personal safety, man, because if the elites found out he was going to release an actual, very detailed documentary about what's going on, who's involved, and, you know, that he would become a threat at that point, you know what I mean? And um, so that's that's probably the other reason why he, you know, his publicist said or denied the whole the whole thing. Let's get back into it. Tell piece in the Wall Street Journal, a front page article exposing the social media site Instagram for being used as a platform for connecting and promoting a vast network of accounts dedicated to the commission and purchase of underage sex content. It was an in investigation conducted by the Wall Street Journal, Stanford University, as well as the University of Massachusetts Amherst. And it found that Instagram's algorithms actively promote pedophilia related content, connecting pedophiles and guiding them to content sellers through various recommended systems. The researchers discovered that Instagram allows people to search explicit hashtags related to child sexual abuse mm. and links them to accounts advertising and selling child sex material. I mean, it was horrific stuff, to say the least, and indicates that something seems to be going on here. There does seem... That's, that's like, uh, we always hear about, like, TikTok being one of the main issues, but I, I never heard of the Instagram story that, he, that he's talking about here. So it kind of shows you how, like, the, these applications that we use every day, man, people are, you know, conducting some foul play on all of them to a certain extent, you know what I mean? And these businesses and these corporations... All they really care about is money, man. They don't really care about uh, the individual.
Um, cause you, cause think about it. If Instagram cared about this situation, they would have reacted to it faster than we, we would have even known about it, but we now it's out there and we know about it. Now you want to react to it. It's too late now. Let's get back into it. Come on. A kind of Harvey Weinstein, like rumbling going on here where the dark secrets everyone knew about are about to come to the surface for all to see. So regardless of whether Mel Gibson goes through with this or not, it does appear that the cat is out of the bag and some pretty seedy behavior among our ruling elite is about to come to much deserved light. I'm not going to lie. I hope he does finish this documentary and everybody in that's involved in it gets thrown under the prison cell, man, because anybody involved in this kind of uh, conduct in a system and whether it be Hollywood or even outside of Hollywood should be in prison man facts let me know what you guys think down below in the comment section shout out to everybody showing love to the channel i appreciate you guys and until next time y'all be safe out there peace